Rabbi Dr. Ephraim Canafogo, whom I know since he was a high school student, which goes back a few years. I can also tell you from personal knowledge that he was a, a, a favorite of the Rav. Let's put it that way. Uh, he is currently the E. Billy Ivory Professor of Jewish Hit History, Literature, and Law. He's recently, he's recently published a book entitled Brothers from Afar, Rabbinic Approaches to Apostasy and Reversion in Medieval Europe. He's a prolific writer, mainly in these fields of medieval Jewish history, literature. He's very well known. He has spoken in our show a few times. And his aunt and uncle David in our show. That's always a good thing to say. So on that happy note, I'm, I'm happy to introduce Rabbi Dr. Ephraim Canafogel. I wrote he was a nephew, he's a nephew of the Canarics. Yeah. Okay, uh, good evening to you. Uh, here where we are in uh, Teaneck, New Jersey, it's afternoon, but there of Tov Lachem. And uh, believe me, I would rather be sitting in Yerushalayim with you. Uh, I last was in Yerushalayim almost exactly a year ago at a Kenes at the University of Rit. And I came back and uh, we know what happened afterwards. That's not the biggest problem, but uh, believe me, Maud Maud Shoef. And therefore I had no problem whatsoever agreeing uh, to the request. It's always a pleasure. I've, I have spoken several times at the shul and frankly, it's a very good audience. So I had no hesitation whatsoever uh, to do this. And I thank Menachem and Larry for making the Kesher. Rav Ot was kind enough to call me. And uh, as far as the Rav, uh, Rabbi Adler is on the line. He was very close to the Rav. So uh, we'll compare notes later. Lichvod uh, Purim, I wanted to take up a topic which I think should be of interest to all uh, those who celebrate Purim, men and women and take you through a little bit of some interesting reasoning that emerges from the Rishonim. I thought about preparing slides and so on. I decided better, you'll listen to me, I'll try to make some jokes, but certainly if you want more sources, I can give them all to you. And we'll try to do this in about a half an hour, so it won't be too long or bid. And I'm happy afterwards to take questions um, and I'll let the moderators uh, handle all of that. So let's begin immediately. There's really an interesting problem. We know that everybody has to hear Megillah, right? Men and women. Everybody's running many minyanim, especially now with all the migbalot. You have to have this minyan and that minyan in order to have everybody able to hear the Megillah if possible. And they even go to bring people the Megillah and so on and so forth. And there's really a basic question that I want to take up with some interesting ramifications. Megillah, Kriyat Megillah, reading the Megillah and Purim is ostensibly a mitzvah seishas man grama. It's a time caused positive mitzvah, time bound positive mitzvah. And really we would think that the women should be at least bin hadin pturot. They should be exempt. Mitzvah seishas man grama. Oh, you'll say like the kiat shofar, the women accepted it and so on and so forth. But min hadin hayinu umrim shayim pturot. And in fact, we say min hadin nashim chayavot. Women are obligated to read the Megillah. Why is that? So it's not Mida Oraita, but there's a very strong Din de Rabbanan. It may be more than that, but there's a very strong Din de Rabbanan. And it's attributed to a very interesting Tana Amora. When, if I ask this Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi, who on Megillah Daf Dalid is the one who says that Nashim Chayavot, and we'll see what else he says. If I ask you whether Yeshua ben Levi was a Tana, lived in the period of the Mishnah, or an Amora living in the time of the Gemara, is he a Tana or an Amora? The answer is yes. He seems to really be straddling both periods, so much so that there are those Rishonim who think there were two Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi's. But in any case, a Rabbi Yushua ben Levi, who has tremendous status in the Gemara, in fact, on Tav Dalad and Megillah, he's the one who teaches us a few things, including the fact that Megillah has to be read both night and day. Tav Dalad, Amor Aleph in Megillah, I call it the Rabbi Yushua ben Levi Daf. A lot of his teachings are there, but he says there for our purposes that women have to 
Here, the reading of the Megillah. Why? Even though mitzvah tasei shazman grama. And again, we normally assume that mitzvot de Rabbanan, kol ma detikun Rabbanan, kein do right detikun. Their enactments were like the Torah enactments. They should have been exempt. No. Why? I'm sure you may know this. Mishum she af hein hayu be'oto hanes. Since women were also part of the Purim miracle, they therefore must also participate in hearing the reading of the Megillah, not just for men, it's a chiyuv on women as well. And here we come to a not unknown, first part of what I'm gonna tell you is not so unknown, I'm hoping to get something less known as we continue. Here we come to a machloket harishonim as to why women are obligated. And in order to give you the full machloket, let me also say, as again, some of you may know, that this Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi actually had a series of such obligations for women. In three places in Shas, in the Talmud, and in three different mitzvot, Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi says, women are also obligated, even though all three of these are mitzvot asay shazman grama on paper. One is Kriyat Megillah. The next is drinking the Arba Kosot at the Seder. Matzah, of course, they have to eat because that's Minhat Torah. Whoever doesn't eat chametz must eat, is prohibited to chametz, must eat matzah. But how do we know specifically that the women also must drink the Dalit Kosot? Again, he says in Psachim Daf Kufchet, last line of Amad Aleph, going over to Amud Bet, Mishum Sha'af Hein Hayu Ba'oto Hanes. So we've got Kriyat HaMegillah, women uh, drinking the four Kosot be Pesach, and the third in the cycle is that women are chayavot behadlakat meirot Chanukah. They can have someone do it for them, they can participate however they do it, but they have to participate. Again, the same Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi, Shabbat Chav Gimel, Mishum Sha'af Hein Hayu Ba'otawaneis, because in all three of these cases, Purim, Pesach, Chanukah, women were significantly, significantly involved, apparently, makes sense, we'll have to see why, in the miracle. So here we come to a very interesting machloket, which on one side has Rashi, and actually his grandson Rashbam, his oldest grandson from that daughter, Rashbam, uh, they have one position, and Tosfot, and I'm talking about now Psachim Kufchet Amud Bet, which is the place to start with this, Tosfot, Right? Ashi students, descendants, and so on. Tosfot there has a different approach. Let's review those two approaches easily. Rashi, Rashbam, on our Vey Psachim, at that point in Psachim, we have both Rashi on the top of the page and Rashbam towards the bottom, a little lower, and they both say the same thing, right? Not surprisingly. What does it mean, Afhein Hayu Ba'oto Hanes, that in all three of these cases, women played a singular role in helping to bring the miracle about. HaKadosh Baruch Hu did the nace, but women participated, right? God helps those who help themselves. It's a Jewish concept. Women played an active role. How so? In Megillat in Nace Purim, Esther was a star, right? Literally, Ayel Tashacha, she was a star. She played a very significant role. On Pesach, all Jewish women played a significant role in meriting the Nath, the Nisim of Yitziat Mitzrayim, the Gemara and Masechet Sota, that B'nai Yisrael went out of Mitzrayim b'schut nashim tzidkaniyot. The Jewish women as a whole, individually and collectively, preserve Jewish marital life and family life in Egypt under very difficult conditions. And that's a significant role which they played, right? It was not a simple thing at all. Again, women actively helped to bring about the Nisim and the Hatzalah of Mitzrayim. Chanukah is a little less well known, but it's known. And here, the Rishonim, Rashi does, and Rashbam don't always mention who the singular woman was, but we know who it was. Rashbam in one place tells us it's the woman named Yehudit. What did she do? So we know that as Hellenism was taking hold in Eretz Israel, which is, of course, what led to the Nitzachon, what required the Nase and the Nitzachon of Hanukkah, there was a woman who, as the Mityavnim did, based on the Yavanim, 
they took advantage of Jewish brides on the night of the day of their wedding, and they raped them. This woman named Yehudit, I'm compressing a lot of material, but as I like to say in English, she did a Ya'el, Ya'el and Sisra. She took her kawach and she gave it very well to the person who was doing this. She killed him. And that brought about a, a really the beginning that led to what the Makabim did. So in other words, there are male Makabim, Mila Shem Eli, right? And there were lady Makabim. I think the YU basketball team, I teach for Yeshiva. I think the women's basketball team is called the Lady Max. Uh, Yudit was the first Lady Mac in a very tough sense. She wasn't playing basketball. She was playing for Judaism. And even though Rishonim point out that this occurred not exactly at the time of Hanukkah, this was really one of the heroic acts that precipitated and set the tone for what was going to be Rabim Biyad Matim and so on and so forth. So when each of these three cases say Rashi and Rashbam, what does it mean? Afhein Hayu Ba'oto Hanes, women had an activist role. They were very active and upfront in helping, precipitating, bringing about, maybe causing really central roles, the Nisim of Purim, uh, Yitziat Mitzrayim and Hanukkah. Therefore, the punchline is, therefore they must also participate in these mitzvot. They participated in the Geula, in the Nes. They must participate in these mitzvot. Kach Amar Rabbi Yishob and Levi, as understood by Rashi and Rash. And there are others earlier who learned that way. That's what they hold. Good. That should be very clear. Tosfot in Psachim Kufchet Amud Bet, there's nothing wrong with what Rashi and Rashbam just explained. Everything that I said is true according to everyone. There's no disputing the facts. But Tosfot, as their want, as is their want, points to the phrasing of Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi and asks a very tight linguistic question. Not hard to follow, but it's a very tight question. Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi says, Nashim must participate in these miracles because af hain hayu ba'oto hanes. They were also part of the miracle. That little word af, right? Maza Omer, what's the mashma'ut of that word af? That women were also part of the miracle. Doesn't mean literally they were tfeilot, even though that language sometimes is found. Doesn't mean they were you know, a minor part, but it means that women were also part of what happened on Purim, on Yitziat Mitzrayim, on Hanukkah. Doesn't mean that what Rashi and Rashbam say, the singular women or the women as a whole in Mitzrayim did, that's all true. What Tosvot is saying is that's not how we assign mitzvot. We don't assign the mitzvot because Esther did something or Yehudit did something or the Nashim in Mitzrayim did something. We assign it for a broader reason. What's the broader reason? So the discussion is not about the historical facts or about the religious observances. All of that is true about the Nashim. The Mechayev, the reason to obligate women in these three mitzvot of Kriyat HaMegillah, Arba Kosot and Ner Hanukkah is you have to have the right Mechayev. You have to have the proper halachic cause. And the proper Mechayev says Tosfot based on the language of Yeshua ben Levi. We're just trying to understand what he says. Af. They were also part. What does that mean? And if I asked you, I'm sure you could answer. When Haman wanted to kill the Jewish people, he didn't say, I've only got the men on deck here, the women I'm going to leave alone. Namash law. Not at all. When Paro subjugated and, and uh, uh, um, uh, trifled with the Jewish people and very, it's not trifled, put restrictions on the Jewish people, there were different parts to Shibud Mitzrayim, but women were as enslaved as the men. They may not have done the same jobs, but women were as not free and as subject to Paro as the men. And the same thing in Hanukkah. When the Mityavnim wanted to destroy spiritually and physically the Jewish people, they didn't say, all right, we'll destroy the men, the women will leave to later. No, af hein hayu ba'oto hanes, says Tosot af. When B'nai Yisrael were delivered, right, the women were delivered by HaKadosh Baruch Hu as much as the men. 
And therefore, whoever was saved by these Nisim must participate in the mitzvot that are connected to them. And so they're not denying what Rashi and Rashbam say in terms of the activist role of women, but they're saying that's not what puts women in the chiyuv mitzvot elu. What puts them in this chiyuv, these chiyuve mitzvah is the fact that they were also part of the uh, uh, trouble, you know, what had to be helped by HaKadosh Baruch Hu and HaKadosh Baruch Hu saved them as much as the men. And in fact, Tosfot says there's a Yerushalmi, the Talmud Yerushalmi explains Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi's statement, Af hein hayu ba'oto safek. They were under the gun in the same way as the men. Af hein hayu ba'ota sakana. They were saved from the danger as the men were. So the machloket, very simply and very elegantly, right? Machloket, we've shown him, is never 90% one side, 10% the other. It's either 50 50, 51 49. Salavechik used to stress that the Rishonim didn't argue over nothing. We have an activist role for women, that's true. But the machloket between Rashi Rashbam on the one hand and Tosfot on the other hand is what's the mechayev? What in fact obligates the women? Rashi Rashbam say it's the activist role of the women that does radiate out to all women. Tosfot says no, it's the fact that the women were saved as much as the men. Anybody saved by these Nisim has to be modeh, has to thank Hashem, and therefore participate in these mitzvot. Very nice machloket. Now, Tosvot is very intellectually honest, and so they say, we like our perush very much, but we have a question on us, on our approach, which does not apply to the approach of Rashi and Rashbam. They're very generous. Rashi and Rashbam are on the clear on this. We have a problem. What's the problem? Sukkah, right? We learn from Exeira Shabbat, Hetvav, Hamishasar, Hamishasar, whatever the Chiyuvim on Matzah and Pesach are, apply equally to Sukkot. Says Tosfo, why don't we take a shortcut? Why don't we say that women, and, and by the way, but that's the point, right? Women end up not being obligated to sit in sukkah, whatever the connection to Pesach is, right? They're obligated to eat the matzah because whoever can't eat chametz must eat, eat matzah. But on Sukkot, right? Teshvu ke'en ta'aduru, it's proper, it's good, right? To have women enjoy the sukkah as well with their families, but the absolute obligation is only on men, min torah says Tosfot, according to us, according to our approach, why don't we say what? Who's ever obligated, whoever was saved by the Sukkot, right, has to participate in that mitzvah, right? In other words, had there not been Sukkot in the Midbar, whether, by the way, Sukkot Mamash, or the best prefabs you can imagine that lasted in the desert, Zenes Gadol, had there not been that nace, the Jewish people wouldn't have survived in the desert. The men were in the Sukkot. The women weren't riding along on, you know, on buses on the side. Everybody sat in whatever the Sukkot were. And so according to us, that if you were saved at the time of this event, you have to do the mitzvah which commemorates it, Rabbi Yishob and Levi. Why didn't he and why don't we also apply this criterion to the mitzvah of Sukkah? According to Rashi and Rashbam, this is no question, right? Even though the women also participated, they had to schlep along in the Sukkot, it's an anayakavot, it's not such a schlep, but they did have to go through it, it's very scary, and so on and so forth. But there was not one woman, or not necessarily active women, who did something different than the men. Everybody was there, there's nobody who's, no women whose activities stand out as they do by Megillah, Hanukkah and Arba Koso, the Yitziat Mitzrayim. This is beyond Yitziat Mitzrayim. But according to us, says Tosfot, why don't we extend Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi's uh, chiyuv to women? They must sit in sukkah. Everybody's getting nervous now, right? Don't worry, it's going to work out, right? Women must eat every meal in the sukkah. No, hold on, but why not? So Tosfot gives an answer. And it's a very good answer, but it's not a fun answer, if I can say that. The very good answer, Tosfot says, and again, if I asked you for your opinion, I'm sure some of you would get this, some perhaps very quickly, right? Play what we call in America, well, it's Rehov Sim Sum Sum, Yesh Lachem Gam Right? Play Sesame Street. 
One of these things is not like the other. Sukkah is not like the other three mitzvot, not just because of what I said before, that there is no active role for women in sukkah. Men and women sat equally, lived equally in the sukkot and the midbar. Lorak said, there's a basic difference between the mitzvah of sukkah on the one hand, mitzad echad, and the other three, mitzad sheni. Again, it's a perfectly correct answer. It's an excellent answer. It was a little fun, right? It's hard to argue with this answer. Namely, mitzvah sukkah is what? A mitzvah min ha Torah, arba kosot, Megillah, Chanukah are mitzvot mid Rabbanan. I want to say Megillah mid Devrei Sofrim, but these are mitzvot mid Rabbanan. And therefore, Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi's principle only applies to mitzvot mid Rabbanan. What's the logic of that? So some of the Achronim suggest a very good logic. Torah mitzvot don't need help. We don't need more recruits. If the Torah gives a mitzvah, who's ever in is in. We don't need to expand the fan base. But mitzvot midrabanan, yesh mitzvah laharchiv, right? We look for good reasons to expand, not to expand capriciously or without basis, but we look for reasons to expand. Mitzvot min torah don't need our help. Simply put it that way. Mitzvot min torah don't need our help. So therefore, Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, very cogently, and very smartly, only said his principle in these three mitzvot, say tosvot, mikra megillah, ner Chanukah arba kosot. He did not extend it also to sukkah to create a new chiyuv there for women because that's a mitzvah in Torah. Okay, a wonderful answer. You know, al tam varayach ein litvakech. We can't argue it. That's the answer. Interestingly, the briskers, habriskaim, <laughs> the briskers, came up with a slightly different answer to this toast fault, although it may be similar. And they said, well, let's again play Sesame Street. Three of these things are not like the fourth. What's true about Mikra Megillah, Neirot Chanukah, and what? Arba uh, Kosot, uh, that's not true of Sukkah. And the answer is, these three have a component, a requirement of what? Pirsume. Nisa, to advertise the nace. Sukkah, even though if you put your sukkah, you know, on the Mirpeset, people may see it, you know. Uh, here in the States, some people put the sukkah in the front yard, some people put it in the backyard in the houses, right? But there's no obligation to do that, right? As long as you have a sukkah, there's no chiyuv, I'm making a bigger sukkah, you'll see it. No, ain't chiyuv kazet. But in Ner Chanukah, put it in the window, put it outdoor, and it's in Midinat Yisrael, right? Put it in the front, make sure everybody sees it, right? Purim, Berov Am Hadrat Melech, although Rashi in Megillah Dafhe says that on the day of Purim, even reading it yourself is Pursum Enisa. That's the miracle. And Arba Kosot as well. I can't spend too much time on all of this, but the obvious indication of Pirsume Nisa, beside the fact that the Gemara talks about it in terms of Chanukah and Purim, is that we make the bracha, Sha'asa Nisim, bracha al Pirsume Nisa. The fact is that even the Arba Kosa would have a very strong dimension of Pirsume Nisa in two ways. There's no bracha, Sha'asa Nisim, for the Haggadah, there's no bracha before the Haggadah at all, because you don't make brachot on brachot, it's tautological. The fact is, though, there is a bracha of Pirsume Nisa in the Haggadah, largely speaking. Again, it's before Pesach, we have more than 30 days, but we can start thinking about it. The bracha right before the Seudat Haseder is Asher Galanu Galavotenu Yagienu. If you look at that bracha, it's Shasan Nisim Lavotenu by Amimaim Basman Hazeh. That bracha right before the second coast is essentially a bracha of Pursume Nisa. There's another way to understand it. The Rambab says that in order to have Arba, in order to have, um, um, what do you call it now, Nerot uh, Chanukah, a poor person would have to sell the shirt off his back. That's also true in the Mishnah and Psachim about Arba Kosot. The Magid Mishnah says, what's the Mechanem Mishutaf? Both of these mitzvot have an obligation of Pirsume Nisa, which is not necessarily true of mitzvot ben HaTorah. So the briskers have given what I'll call, again, Talmud of the Rav, so I can say it, I hope you like it, uh, 
a more exciting answer, right? In other words, Sukkah doesn't have Pirsume Nisa. The other three mitzvot do. It's not just the Raita versus the Rabbanan. We have this very interesting difference in the way that it's, these mitzvot were structured. Okay. So now in the time that we have left, I want to show you that I think there's another, there's a third possibility even among the Rishonim. And it may in some ways adumbrate, anticipate what the Brisker said, although that, that might not be the case. We know that Rav Salavechik, his grandfather, Rav Chaim, his father, all of them, uh, you just had the patira of uh, Rav Meshulam David, right? The Briskerov, they all anticipated what Rishonim said. They didn't have the Rishonim sometimes. They didn't have too many stars, the Rav used to tell us. They couldn't afford it. He had all kinds of reasons. That was the main reason. When they had to get one, they had to spend a lot of money, and they did. But the fact is they kept it down. They were always thinking like we shown him. So whether or not what I'm about to tell you exactly corresponds to the brisker position or not, it's still something pretty interesting. We're going in search of a third shitata rishonim. Again, at this point, we've got Rashi Rashbam, the activist position of the women, not true in Sukkah, no question. The toast vote answer between the Oraita de Rabbanan and the brisker emendation, the brisker addendum, a friendly amendment, between Pirsume Nisa, true of the three mitzvot where Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi expressed this principle, and not the case in Sukkah. In Kazadin Pirsume Nisa, the Sukkah. Okay, good. So there's a tshuva in Shuvot Marami Rotberg. I'll show you in a couple of minutes, I'll tell you, I can show you where it is, that based on Kitve Yad, we know it's different people, but it's earlier people even, but the tshuva in Marami Rotberg goes like this. Listen carefully. Rabbeinu Tam, another grandson of Rashi, Rabbi Ashbam's younger brother, Rabbi Nutam, was asked by one of his students, Moshe of Pontois, Moshe of Pontizai, Northern France, why don't we, let's obligate women in Lechem Mishnah, in two Chalot Sudat Shabbat, and in Sudash Lishit, because of the principle of Af Hein Hayu Ba'oto Hanes. What's the nace? Man. Nashim achlu et haman kimo anashim. So let's say that women are obligated to eat shalosh sudot and lecha mishnah, which they are, by the way, I don't want to make any trouble, but they are, by the way, because of afhen hayu bo tohanes. So interestingly, uh, Rabbeinu Tam gives the answer, uh, the Ran in one place asks, why did Rabbeinu Tam just say, we know why women are obligated because who's ever obligated in, keep, this is part of Kibbutz Va'oneg, the mitzvot with the Rabbanan to honor Shabbat. And we know when it comes to Shabbat, Shabbat is also mitzvot, say Shatman Grama, right? But whoever is in Shamor, whoever cannot violate the Malachot of Shabbat must keep the Zachor, the mitzvot in Torah, whether Kiddush or anything else, even though these are time caused positive mitzvot on paper. Who are dinami and mitzvot the Rabbanan, Kibud Va'oneg. Whoever is obligated in quote unquote the negative aspects of Hilchot Shabbat, not negative, but the prohibitions, Mid Rabbanan, must also honor Shabbat in terms of positive mitzvot, Mid Rabbanan too. Why Rabbeinu Tam didn't get, go, go with that pat answer? The Ron asks, Achronim answer, not for us right now. Rabbeinu Tam says, you know what? Good idea. Rabbeinu Tam gives it this, his haskama. Women can indeed be obligated in. Lechem Mishnah, Shalosh Su'udot, because of Afhein Hayu Ba'otohanes. Gadluto Shal Rabbeinu Tam, who says, not in these words, just to keep you awake with a little American English humor, Rabbi Yishob and Levi, you obligated women in three mitzvot, I'll see you a three and raise you one. I don't get involved in this stuff, but I know the lingo, right? I'll give you a fourth mitzvah, I'll extend it. There's a fourth. Lechem Mishnah V'Shalosh Su'udot. Oh, how can Rabbeinu Tam say this? He says, because I'm doing Sesame Street the opposite. Here's a fourth thing, fourth mitzvah, that is like the other three. What would uh, Rashi and Rashbam say to Rabbeinu Tam? Sorry, Rabbeinu Tam, women were not more active in the man than men. So we're not in on this. What would Tosfot Psachim say to Rabbeinu Tam? Great idea. Why? All we said was that Afein Hayu Bautohanes does not work in mitzvot 
the oraita. Therefore, it doesn't work in sukkah, but it would work in mitzvot de rabbanan. I will suggest seriously, lecha mishnah and shalashudis are the de rabbanan partners of sukkah. Jews have to sit in sukkah kivasu kotal shafti. That's a da'oraita, though. We can't obligate women because of afein hayu, according to Tosfot Psachim. But Tosfot Psachim wouldn't have a problem, ostensibly, obligating women in the Rabbanan mitzvot in the Midbar, from the Midbar, based on the salvation of the Midbar. Lechem Mishnah Shalosh Su'udot. In fact, I would say Tosfot Psachim goes with Rabbeinu Tam. He's one of the first and leading Balei HaTosfot. Ze'a Tosfot Shalosh. He doesn't say it there in that Tosfot, but this should be stapled on, clipped on as a friendly amendment. Very good. So we've extended Rabbi Shua ben Levi, Tzad Hala. Again, interesting what the briskers would say, Ein kazem shal nisa, but okay, let's leave them out for now. Amongst the Rishonim, Rabbeinu Tam would fit beautifully with the Tosfot itself. Again, the Oraita, no obligation of Rabbi Shua ben Levi, Afein Hayu, the Rabbanan, Yesh Kazeh Very good. However, if you look at that Chuvat Marami Rutenberg, you'll see that, again, if we assume that this is Maharam's own Chuva, he's counterpunching and learning. He pushes back. And in that Chuva, whoever is writing this line, I'll tell you, I think is writing it in a minute. It's going to get even more interesting. The pushback is rock rega, rega, rega. You, what they, so they say there, <laughs> you want to expand Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi from Megillah, Dalit Kosot, Hanukkah to a fourth case. You better make sure, very politely, that you have Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi's key factors exactly right. This other opinion says, I don't think that extension works. You know why? Because there's another very, there is a very important principle which is true of the three places where Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi obligated women, which is not true in Man and Lecha Mishnah, uh, as we'll see clearly. Namely, what's true? And again, if I, if I ask you to answer, I bet many of you would come up with this. It's a very interesting, logical thought. What's true about Lecha Mishnah, about Sukkah, about, sorry, Hanukkah, Megillah, Dalit Kosot, that's not true about Lecha Mishnah and Shalashudis. It's not the right of the Rabbanan. They're all the Rabbanan. So on that level, it's four peas in a pod, right? The amendment is accepted. But in terms of the basic incidents themselves, there's something strikingly different, really strikingly different between those three mitzvot on the one hand that commemorate these particular episodes and Lecha Mishnah v'shalosh Sudot, namely, and here's the, here's the exact quote in Hebrew, and we'll translate and talk about it. In those three cases, Purim, Arba Kosot, Yitziat Mitzrayim, and Chanukah, Yisrael, Hayu Bisakana Vinimlatu. The Jewish people were in danger and they escaped. That is not true in the same way as we'll see. About what? The Jews in the Midbar. Yes, Hayu Besakana, right? If not for the Sukkot, if not for the Man, they would have starved. But the Nimlitu is the key word. What means Hayu Besakana and Nimlitu? It's a question of where the threat is coming from. In Purim, Chanukah, and, and Mitzrayim, where was the Sakana coming from? Min HaOyev, Min HaChutz. Right? The bullets, so to speak, were being fired by Haman and by the Mityavnim and Hakadosh Baruchu, Dachat Hayeri, Rabim Miyad Meatim. He caused their attempts to go astray. Hayu Bisakana Vinimutu, Vachain Bitziat Mitzrayim. The enemy is Min Hachut Oyev Mamash Vinora. And the Jewish people were rescued in these occasions by Hakadosh Baruchu with his help. God helps those who help themselves. Hayu Bisakana Vinimutu. Right? What danger were the Jews under in the Midbar? Who, who, who was posing the danger, Kaviachol? That's what I would call an inside job. 
That was between B'nai Yisrael and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Right? That's Lech Tech HaCharai Bamidbar. So lo sakana v'nimletu. Oh, somebody was after you and I allowed you to escape. That's Ani. Nishmart hem al yadai says al yadai says HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I chose to let you be my am school on to take you through the Vinbar. So lo besakana v'nimletu. It's very interesting, right? HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, ki'ilu, <laughs> right? If I save you, says HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that's between me and you. That's the breach between HaKadosh Baruch Hu and Am Yisrael. And therefore, this other position in Chuvat Maram says against Rabbeinu Tam, says not like Rabbeinu Tam wants to disagree with Rabbeinu Tam. You can't extend Yoshua ben Levi's three cases to the fourth because Zelodome. It's not similar. There's something fundamentally different. Again, in those mitzvot where the Oyev came, Hayu b'sakana v'nimletu, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu caused and allowed the Jewish people to escape from Yad HaOyev, chayavim lishtatev kol echad, anashim nashim v'tav, kol echad chayav lishtatev. Hatzalat Purim, mehaman v'ubana v'chol arishayim amalek, hatzalat Yitziat Mitzrayim, Mikol HaMitzrayim, Mikol HaAmsham, Vehatzalat Chanukah Min Hamit Yavmim. Oh, B'zeh, Be'elu HaMitzvot, Rabbi Yeshua Ben Levi says, Af Hein Hayu Ba'oto HaNais, All hands on deck. Kol Echad Shenitzal, Chayav Lishtatef. When it comes to the fact that HaKadosh Baruch Hu helped us in the Midbar to get through, with Sukkot, with Lechem Mishnah, with Man, Yafem Od. But that's between us and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We weren't worried. We were never besafek sham. Lechtech acharai b'amitbar, ze abrit. Shekarat HaKadosh Baruch Hu imam Yisrael b'sinai. For such a miracle, you can't obligate women because of Afein Hayu Ba'oto Anes. You could obligate them in Lechem Mishnah and Shalashudas for other reasons, Kibbut Va'oneg, but you can't obligate them in you can't obligate them as you would in these three mitzvot. So let's summarize and I'll pose one final question. And then if you'd like, I'm ready to take questions. The moderators will decide as follows, as follows. So we've just found a shita chadasha barishonim, <laughs> right? Something new in Tosfot, and I'll show you where it goes. Again, Rashi Rashbam say, women are obligated by Yoshua ben Levi in Purim Chanukah, Leil HaSeder Dalet Kosot, because of Afein Hayu Bauto Anes, because of the outstanding activist role which women had. Tabaseder Menachem? Ken, ken, ma'am, tzuyay, ma'am. I wrote it here now. Okay. Yeah, Seder. Women are obligated because of the activist role. Good. Then, Tosfot Psachim, no, it's not a passive role, but it's a participatory role. Women were also part of the Hatzalah and Ah Sukkot. So Tosfot answers Sukkot is the right top, but you give me a mitzvah de Rabbanan where women also participated, Tosfot Psachi might say yes. And that's what Rabbeinu Tam does. He, said, he says it would apply. I'm ready to extend Rabbi Shubin Levi to Lechem Mishnah, Shalosh Sudot, not Sukkah, because that's been Hat Torah, but anything with the Rabbanan, I'm ready to expand. And now we have a new shita at the end of Chuvat Marami Rutenberg, which pushes back against the Rabbeinu Tam and says, we agree that it's participatory. We agree that it's because women were also part of the Hatzalah, but it's got to be the essence of the three. Rabbi Shub and Levi is Atana Amora. We can't outthink them. Kavanato Haita, that should extend to those mitzvot where the Oyev is min hachutz, not where B'nai Yisrael were saved, Kaviyachol al Yidei HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Kizeh Batuach. For that, you'd need another reason. You can't use Afein Hayu Bauto Anes. I can't prove it to you now, but if you take a look at Tosfot Megillah Daf Dalid, Tosfot Megillah Daf Dalid raises a related question. Why do we need to obligate women? Because whoever is in the Isur of Achilat Chametz is in the Mitzvah of Achilat Matzah, Let's obligate women because of what? Afein hayu bo What would Tosfot Psachim immediately answer to that question? The French answer, what are you starting up here? What are you giving a bad question? 
מצאז מדאורייתא, זה כמו סוכה. זה לא יוון בסוכה, אבל זה כמו סוכה. נת שייך, לא, לא שייך כאן. And that's what the Mordechai there says. However, Tosfot gives two answers. Now the two answers look like they're uh, denying the proposition, but they're not. Tosfot is assuming fundamentally that you could obligate women even in the Doraita if you found a Sakana there. The problem is what? Right? They assume you could. It's a Sakana criteria. And in that respect, Matzah is like Arba Koso. Lo Mishane, according to Tosfot, Megillah, Doraita, De Rabbanan, it's a different Tosfot. And in fact, I, get, I can't prove this to you now, but we can talk about it further either now or you can email me and I'll explain it all. In fact, al Kitvayad, we know that the one who responded to Rabbeinu Tam, the Chuvat Maram, Zalah Maram, Zayacholiot Maram, one of the last Balayat Tosfot, it's in fact Rabbeinu Tam's nephew, Ribal HaTosfot. So Tosfot Psachim is like Rabbeinu Tam, Hachiluk HaYisodi Ben Da'oraita De Rabbanan, and you could extend to Lechem Mishnah, Rabbi Shobin Levi, Lefi Shittat Tosfot, and Tosfot Megillah, which holds that Afein Hayu works even what? In a mitzvah de oraita, that's the nafkamina, that's a big difference. You're going to make these shikot, you got to have a difference. Even in the de oraita, provided what? That that mitzvah min ha-Torah meets the key criterion of Hayu b'sakana v'nimletu. There was an oyev, min achutz, and we have to therefore let everybody else participate. Is that the briskers for Sumenisa? Maybe, but that's too difficult to do now. But the simple point is, what falls on the outside then, according to Tosfot Megillah, is Sukkah. That's not Hayub B'Sakana V'Nimletu. There's no Oyev bin Achutz, as opposed to Matzah, which is a mitzvah min Torah, right? That was a case of Hayub B'Sakana V'Nimletu. So again, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is mochel al Hatzalato. If he saves us, he doesn't need for all of us to participate. We and he know who he saved. But if there come Ish Oyev, Sarva Oyev, Haman Hara Hazeh, everybody must get out, Gvarim, Nashim, Kulam, to recognize this Hatzala. And finally, finally, let's see if we can push for one more nafkamina according to these three shitot, the two that we knew before we started, or that at least seem to be known, and the third one, which we discovered a little bit, Zahidu Shalanu, as follows. Let's come up with a, another case which will show the differences. I would suggest, somebody could say, Parshat Zachor, Zichirat Amalek, the problem there is there's also a lav, lo tishkach, not a bad answer, yesh kazem in chat chinuch, but we won't do that now. I would volunteer the mitzvah of Sipur Yitziat Mitzrayim, and you're allowed to do this when you do these kinds of nafkaminas, according to the Shita, the Rambam, the Chinuch, and others, that Sipur Yitziat Mitzrayim is a mitzvah min ha-Torah. It's not just me, the Rabbanan, it's mitzvah min ha-Torah. The Chida has a discussion of this mitzvah min ha-Torah. Are women obligated? Of course we do it, but why are women obligated in Sipur Yitziat Mitzrayim Belel Pesach. So you could say, whoever has to eat the matzah and drink the wine has to tell the story. Rav Salavechik would love that because the whole Seder, including the eating, as he showed beautifully over the years, is a kiyum in Sipur Yitziat Mitzrayim. But let's do it very clinically. Let's assume that these things are separable. Matzah, whoever can eat chametz must eat matzah. Dalit koso, Yishub ben Levi, Afin, Ayub, Hanes, what about Mitzvah Sipur Yitziat Mitzrayim, if you assume it's a mitzvah in Torah, just to make it interesting. Right? Okay, so let's check our three shitot. What would Rashbam and Rashi say? Got to go back to the beginning. What, what would Rashi and Rashbam say? Hmm, Ulai Ken, Lama, the activist women, the Nashim Tzidkaniot, who obligated them, the active women, the role that the women played actively in minimizing or, or uh, not uh, mitigating, minimizing is not the word, in mitigating the shibut, right? We'll get the Hebrew words later. In mitigating the shibut, zemechayevotam, gam bedalet kosot, vaafilu bahagadat leo pesach. Ah, vazemidoraita, lo mishane. That's an activist role for women. Well, I can, according to Rashi and Rashbam. Good. What would Tosfot Psachim say with Rabbeinu Tam? Slicha. For this reason, why? We have a rule, what I told you before, not so much fun. 
דאורייתא דה רבנן, אם זה מצווה מן התורה, אי אפשר לחייב based on an extra principle. That's why Rabbi Shobit Levi stuck to mitzvot with the Rabbanan. So even though Dalit Kosot and what? Matzah look very similar. One is the Oraita, one is the Rabbanan in terms of the essence of the Chiyuv. You can't obligate women in uh, uh, Matzah for this reason, right? Like Sukkah. Sukkah, uh, sukkah no, but Lecha Mishnah and Shalosh Sudot, yes, according to Tosot Psachim Kufchet with Rabbeinu Tam, with their leader. And what would this third shita say? Shahayu b'sakana v'nimletu. What about Haggadah, even if it's a mitzvah in the Torah? If it's a mitzvah the Rabbanan, by the way, then Tosu Pesachim would agree too. It's a chip shot, but we don't want to do easy things. We want to do something a little bit of a, of a chidushkan. If, even if you say it's the Oraita, Tosvot Megillah, which holds that you can say Afhein Hayu b'mitzvot min ha-Torah, provided right, the context of the mitzvah is a salvation, and it's not an inside job between HaKadosh Baruch Hu v'Re'av v'Am Yisrael. That Tosfot, and that's the re, the shitat re, at the end of the Chuvat Maram, Hayu b'Sakanav v'Nimlutu, that Tosfot would say, yes, we can obligate women in Haggadah the same way we can, from Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, the same way we can uh, obligate women in what? Dalit kosot, right? We don't need to do it in matzah because there's a hekesh, but we can obligate them here in this Doraita, even uh, though Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi didn't say so. So again, what we learn here is Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, kalal shalosh mitzvot biyachad, and the Rishonim are trying to figure out what is the mechane mishutaf? Is it the activist role of women, which would have hashlachot? That's Rashi Rashbam. Is it the participatory, the salvational role of women? That's Tosfot Psachim, where the only limitation that Tosfot and Rabbeinu Tam come up with is this only works in mitzvot the Rabbanan. Rabbi Shubin Levi, after all, only said explicitly these three mitzvot. An extension into mitzvot and HaTorah would therefore be beyond gvul shitato. Or Tosvot Megillah and the response of Re to Rabbeinu Tam that in, included very subtly but very clearly, I think, in Yoshua ben Levi is show me Shayu b'Sakana v'Nimlatu. That's the Mechanem Mishutaf. It's similar to the other Tosvot. It's not about women's active role, which is true. It's about women as those who are saved by Hakadosh Baruch Hu Min Haoyev. Hayu b'sakana v'nimlatu, that nice, Im- nice imagery. That imagery, it's not a nice imagery, but the enemy is firing the weapons and HaKadosh Baruch Hu is deflecting. He's taking those weapons and making them into nothing. That's not the Midbar. There was no enemy firing weapons. That's between HaKadosh Baruch Hu v'am Yisrael. And that's why there's a difference. So by the way, according to Tosfot Megillah, even a mitzvah de Rabbanan, like Lecha Mishnah and Shalosh Sudot, you couldn't obligate women because it doesn't meet the key criterion of Yeshua ben Levi of Hayu Sakana ben Emiltu. Zehashur, I hope it was understandable. Menachem, if you think that you can ask questions, I'm ready. What do you think? First of all, thank you very much for the Shur of Me'alev. I understood a little bit more the issue of נשים ומצוות שהזמן גרמן. בסדר. ואם יש שאלות, אז בבקשה, אנחנו פנויים, בבקשה, מי שמעוניין נפתח את המיוט, ישאל את השאלה וייתן לרב אפרים לענות את התשובה. בסדר. לא להסס, אם יש שאלה, תשאלו. לא להסס, בבקשה. או שהכל ברור או שזה לא... צריך את הראשון שיפתח בדרך כלל. טוב, טוב. טוב, אפרים, אני לא רוצה לשאול את השאלה, אבל פשוט להגיד, when the fellow there, an American fellow, uh, was doing um, reconstruction of the swimming pool. And there they came across uh, a matzeva and the Israel authority 
um, of the museums uh, actually came and they verified that this indeed was the gravesite of uh, Rabbi Shua ben Levi, and they put it together as a tourist site now, and there are people who come for the yard site and, uh, and those people who spend their vacations, which I've done with my family several times over, have a wonderful place for a minion right there um, at this uh, site of Rabbi Shua ben Levi. Yeah, Femo. <laughs> Uh, Ani Kazek Kohen, so I don't know from, from Kvarim, but uh, it's interesting. And the question is, which Rabbi Shua ben Levi? According to Sefer Yichuse Tanoim Vamoroim, there were two, but anyway, it's uh, my father, uh, Allah HaShalom, was once touring Israel with my mother. They went on a tour and they got to the Kever Arambam, and my father didn't want to get off the bus. So the tour guide said to my father, but you know, uh, 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 something, it's, it's um, uh, he said, if Shar that the Aram Amlonik Barsham, you know, we don't know exactly. So my father said, Ober is Da Sayyid, some Jew is buried there. I'm not getting off the bus, but thank you for that. So anything about Kvarim have to be told to me by others. I didn't know that yet. Now, thank you very much. I, I've been in Worms a couple of times for conferences and I, I got pictures. I made people take pictures of the Kever of Marami Rutenberg, which survived the war. And there are other, all kinds of Kvarim. And people say, how do you know about these Kvarim? I said, oh, I got pictures. So I thank you for that. Yeda uh, Chadash. Good, good. The other thing you'll appreciate, Rabbi Adler, I could tell it to everybody, the, 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 the brisker approach of Pirsume Nisa as an answer I heard it from, when the Rav said it in the Shi'ur, he said it from his father of Moshe, from the father, from the, from, the, from, the, from the Tate. And I once wrote something about it and I wrote, and I checked it with somebody, yeah, the father. Turns out in the Igrot grid, like many other things the Rav did, it wasn't his father's answer, it was his answer. He told it to his father, but the Rav never wanted to take credit. So he blamed all his stuff. The, the Zeta said it, Rav Chaim said it, the father said it, he didn't say anything. Uh, this is another one that I, I learned about 20, 30 years later when it was published, it was his tarots. He blamed it on the father. Anyway, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope uh, it was beneficial and I'm happy to take questions again either now or uh, we'll give you my email. It's very easy. It's Canterfog. You have to know how to spell my name. First eight letters of my name at yu.edu. You can write me. You can look at the YU site. My name will be up. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's always it's a, always a pleasure to hear from you. I'm glad that you joined us. It's not the first time you've spoken to us, and it's always enlightening, and I'm sure we were all enlightening. Wish you a happy Purim, and we Thank wish you that you'll be able to come back and visit us. Oh, amen. That's a very good bracha. I love that one. Blee okay. Netter. I come back. I'll go in the show. Beautiful. I, I'm on top of that. That's... Uh, Toda rabba, toda Thank you. Maybe Captain Eitan will be the pilot. Oh, oh. Toda rabba Oh, Toda rabba Hey,